rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the song to the Lord. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, let's all sing. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord, we pray, rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise, yeah. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise, oh, rise. Oh, rise. say. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise, say. worship you lord we love you we honor you you are so great well when you have a band to cover up your mistakes when you try to go up high on a note and then they're not there it sounds different <laughs> well hey it's vbs sunday Woo! that means the band is off Woo! okay all right but me and lisa are here Do you feel loved? All right, cool. Hey, we want to teach you guys a new song, okay? All right? Now, I'm going to sing a part, then Lisa's going to sing a part. When Lisa sings her part, that's when you sing, okay? Do you want me to, you want to do it back? Okay, when are you going to sing? <laughs> and you got a tough crowd. <laughs> Here we go, let's try it. Why did he save you? So I could be a soul set free. Why did he save me? So you could be a child forgiven. Oh, why did he save you? So we could show his grace and mercy. Why did he save me? Set apart to declare his glorious praise. Sing it now. Chosen to radiate his glory and his grace. Once without hope, his mercy we received. So let's show the world what it means to be redeemed. Sing it now. Why did he save so I could be a soul set free. Why did he save me? So you could be his child forgiven. All right, we got to start that over. That was beautiful. I like that. All right, you guys get the hang of it? Do you know what we're missing? Percussion. Why did he save you? 
See, now I can keep time. If you don't do that, you don't know what I'm going to play. It's going to be terrible. One, two, you know what to do. Oh, why did he save you? So I can be a soul set free. Why did he save me? So you could be his child fucking man. Why did he save you? So we could show his grace and mercy. Why did he save me? To take his glory to the nation. Set apart to proclaim his glorious news. That all is forgiven now, the old can be made new. Once without hope, his mercy we've received. So let's show the world what it means to be redeemed. Sing it now. Why did he save you? So I could be a soul set free. Why did he save me? Why did he save you? So we could show his grace and mercy. Oh, why did he save me? To take glory to the nation. Saved us to show his glory. He saved us to show his love. He saved us to show his glory and his love. Sing it now. He saved us to show his glory. He saved us to show his love. He saved us to show his glory and his love. One more time. He saved us to show his glory. He saved us to show his love. He saved us to show his glory and his love. Here we go. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. How was your week? I've heard some stories. I've heard some stories. I, I went to the doctor twice. And Sam back there went to the doctor. Now, what happened to yours? Uh huh. Yeah. What happened? Oh. Do you think we have some things to pray about today? I think we have some things to be grateful for. We have things that where God has taken care of us. God's provided answers. I went to a doctor on Monday. Gave me the wrong medicine. Went to another doctor on Thursday and got the right medicine. Everything's yay. <laughs> How many of y'all believe that God can use doctors? Okay? We all get to be used for his glory. And I'll tell you what, when I think of his goodness, when I think of all that he's done for me, how could I but respond to all he is, all he provides, all he has meant for me? I'm so grateful to him. How can I keep from singing his praise? The song says, how can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? Knowing you see me through 
sing in your praise. How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to sing. Oh, I can sing in the troubled time. Sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step and I fall down again. I can sing when you pick me up. Sing cause you're there. I can sing Cause you hear me, Lord, when I call to you in prayer. I can sing with my last breath. Sing for I know that I'll sing with the angels and the saints around the throne. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say now? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart. I am loved by the King. And it makes my heart, I am loved by the King. And it makes my heart want to sing. Oh, oh, I can sing. We worship you, Lord. Oh, 
God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole of stretch from the sky.
what a powerful name it is. Oh, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for a new song, a new song in our mouth. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our redeemer, that you pull us out of the mud and the mire. Lord God, that you put our feet upon the rock. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, his name is powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you today for a firm place to stand. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you pulled us out that you put a new song in our mouth. Do you need a new song in your mouth this morning? Do you need something new coming out of your mouth today? Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise this morning, Lord. We give you praise this morning. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is beautiful. Thank you, Lord, that we can call out to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is here. Set your mind on him. Put a new song in your mouth this morning. Give him praise this morning. Give him praise for who he is. Thank you, Jesus, that you have a beautiful name. Thank you, Jesus, that we can praise your name. We give you praise this morning. During this next song, if you need help with a new song in your mouth, maybe you need to bring somebody before the Lord to put a new song in their mouth. Maybe you need to praise him this morning. Whatever it is, if you've got something that you need, come to the front. Let us pray with you. Let him lift you up this morning. Let him fill you with his peace that passes all understanding. There is nothing like the peace of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for that. We give you praise this morning, and we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of loves, oh, my heart. 
heart becomes free and my shame is over your presence Lord say it with us now Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the end your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome, come blood this place and fill the air. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more. Nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Oh, your presence. Oh, Lord, I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence knows. Sing it out now Holy Spirit, you are welcome Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and the atmosphere, your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence. Your glory, God, 
God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Sing that again. I have tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Where's that at? In your presence, Lord. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to join us. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence Lord all of you is more than enough for all of me or every person every With your love and all I 
Lord God, that you hear the cries of our heart. Lord, that you meet us right where we are. That you love us so much that you want us to be more than where we are. You want us to do more than what we've done. You want us to say more than what we've said. You don't settle. But Lord God, I'm so thankful that you pull me out of where I am. That you meet us where we are. Lord God, you give us so much more. I thank you that you are the song of our heart. That you are the strength that we need. Thank you for your peace and your joy, Lord God. Your peace passes all understanding. It doesn't matter what's going on. The world can fall apart. But Lord God, your peace is where we are grounded. We are grounded in your word. We are grounded in your love. And we are children of the most high God. Oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you for being the rock that we stand on. I thank you, Lord God, for making sense of what doesn't make sense to us. But Lord God, your ways are higher than ours. I thank you that we can rest in knowing that you have already found victory. You have already overcome the enemy. You are Father. I thank you, Jesus, that we rest in you, in your name and who you are, because we are not enough. We will never be enough. But you are. You always have been. And I thank you, Jesus, that we can be close to you, that we can lay against you, that we can feel your heartbeat, that we can feel who you are. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord God, for using us for your will to bring glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory this morning. We rest in you, Lord God, in your name. Let him be the new song in your mouth. Let the words that come out bring glory and praise to his name. We exalt you. Exalt you this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your love, healing, joy, peace. Thank you, Jesus. You are what we need. You are all that we need. You are more than enough. Lord God, we lift up this day, this moment to you. We lift our hearts and our minds to you to focus in on you this morning. On what you've already done in our lives. 
on what you're going to do in our lives. But more importantly, God, just who you are, because that is more than we need. You are the reason. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. We thank you, Jesus, for this day, for this time. I thank you, Lord, that your word is shared this morning, that your word is seed to our hearts, that you take root. Lord God, that you transform us by the renewing of our mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for speaking this morning. I thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. We give you glory and honor this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can continue in tithes and offerings, that we can bring to your name a portion of what you've given to us, Lord God, that we can build the kingdom for your name, that we can reach the lost. Give us clarity and wisdom, Lord God, to do and accomplish your will in our lives. And in those around us, Lord God, let us be the feet and the hands to do what you've called us to do in your name. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Don't you just love how he knows what you need when you need it? <clears throat> you know, we were talking, we've been talking about represent and representing God and how important that is. And we actually sang a song that went right along with this message this morning. And I love that. When God does that, it's like, yes, go God. But how many have ever, ever heard the term, come out from among them? Yeah? You ever heard that? Well, I believe that that's what God is saying to us today. Come out from among them. Be separate. Be separate. Because how many of you know it's hard to represent if you're not different? Right? 
If you're just the same, you just blend in with everybody else, it's very difficult to stand out and represent. Amen? But what keeps us from representing? What keeps us from representing? What keeps us from step, stepping out and being separate? What keeps us from that? We're attached to something, right? We're attached to what God is trying to separate us from. And it's like, man, I don't want to let go. Oh, God. We want God, but we don't want to let go of this. We want God, but we don't want to let go of that, right? And so it's difficult, and God's saying, come out from among them. Be ye separate, right? Represent me. You know, we just sang the song, more than enough. All of you, Lord, is more than enough for me. That's a difficult song to sing and mean it, isn't it? Because these aren't just words up here on a, on a PowerPoint. These are words that mean something. So when we say you're more than enough, what are we saying? We're saying that it's, I can detach from what you're wanting me to detach from, and you're more than enough. I want all of you. God, I want to separate myself from all of that, and I want to be with all of you. But see, we can sing it, but it's not always easy to do it. There's so many things that, that maybe divide us and cause us to be maybe divided in our loyalty towards God. But the Lord is calling, us to, calling to us today and He's saying, come on out, come out from among them. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. Okay? What Paul is saying here, he's not saying completely segregate yourself from unbelievers. He's saying if you look like the unbelievers that you're around, there's a problem. Right? If we look like the unbelievers, if we look no different than the world, God is saying come out. From among them. It's time to look different. It's time to be separate. It's time to, to, for people to be able to determine the difference between the church and the world. And if they can't, there's a problem with the church, not the world. Because the world is going to do what the world does. But the church is supposed to be godly and separate and, and represent a holy God. I, got, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had to stand up for what is right? Have you ever had to, to maybe do something in the midst of a crowd and say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And maybe people made fun of you. Maybe they laughed at you. Maybe they ridiculed you. But you stood your ground. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about, you know what, no matter the, the consequence, no matter what it's going to mean to you, because a lot of times that's who we're looking out for, right? Number one, as long as it makes me happy, as long as it doesn't hurt me, as long as this, I, I'm okay with it, but sometimes God is going to put us in positions where we stand out, and it's going to hurt a little bit. Okay, but we also serve a God that will restore us, that will be there with us, right? It could hurt us physically. It could hurt us emotionally because they called us a name, right? But we must stand for what is right. As I was preparing this, and I had prepared this, and then God brought this scripture into my, into my reading time this week. And I was reading in Mark this week, and it was in chapter, the fifth chapter, where Jesus lands on the other side of the shore. And it says, a man named Jairus came to him, and he begs Jesus to come to heal his daughter. Now think about this. Jesus just got, was in, was in a boat, got to the other side of the shore. Okay, I don't know if he had been there before, but as soon as he gets there, this man runs up to him. And he says, hey, come heal my daughter. He, his name had... Right? Jesus' name was out there. 
But can I tell you, would Jesus' name had been out there, would anybody had known about Jesus if he was just like everybody else? If he was walking around doing just what everybody else was doing? No. The reason why everybody knew who Jesus was is because Jesus was unique. Jesus was representing the Father. Jesus was was coming out from among them. Yes, he hung out with them, but he wasn't like them. Amen? Come on. He hung out with them, but he wasn't like them. What happens is... We, we think, oh, you know, you know, pastor says we shouldn't be best friends with sinners. And stuff. Oh, I'm okay. Okay, but then you start being influenced. Then you start being the one being influenced rather than the one that is influencing them. See, here's the wonderful thing about Jesus. When Jesus was hanging out with sinners and all these people that needed him, he didn't change one thing. He was faithful to the Father all the way through it. He didn't compromise his convictions He didn't compromise the truth at all, but he stood on it, and he walked in it no matter what. And because of that, here comes a man, as soon as he lands on the seashore, here comes a man running up and saying, Jesus, you're Jesus, right? You're Jesus, the one I've been hearing about all over. You're Jesus. Yeah, I'm Jesus. Hey, I need you to come to my house then. Come on. It's like, what? Yeah, I need you to heal my daughter. But if Jesus was just like everybody else, if he just blended into the crowd, Jairus would have never looked him up, right? He never would have sought after him. But because Jesus was different, he sought for him. See, but Jesus stood out because his message was different, right? It was a message of love. His life was different. He came preaching holiness, commitment to God, and denial of self. Wait a minute, that's not what what the Pharisees have been teaching us. It is a different message, right? The Pharisees were like, yes, it's it's, it's more of an egocentric type type ministry. It's look at me, look at me, look at me. And Jesus is coming and saying, don't look at me, don't look at me. Look at the Father, look at the Father, right? Because here's the thing, when, when people see something different in us, and they come to us, we don't let them focus on us, we point them on to Jesus. Okay, that's where our representation, that's where it matters, is when we take that we've represented Christ, and then we pass on what they're looking at, and we say, no, this is all about God. The only reason I'm this way is because of Him. The only reason I have love in my heart today is because of Him. The only reason I showed you grace today is because He showed me grace. Right? We can read through all throughout Scripture. All throughout Scripture where people chose to be set apart, chose to be different. And it's made a mark on our history, right? Would we be here today if a lot of people didn't step up and say, I'm going to represent God. I'm going to represent God with all of my heart, all my life. I'm going to give Him my everything. <clears throat> there is one account that sticks out to me a little more than the others. And that account, if you have your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. This is a very familiar story, t- st- account to many of us. What was happening... In the beginning of the chapter was King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was constructing a statue. This statue was 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Okay, I don't know about you. They didn't have power tools back then. I don't know if this was decapods or what it was. But man, I'm telling you, this thing was huge. It was a gold, it was constructed of gold. Okay, huge statue. I mean, you could probably see it from miles and miles away. If anybody's seen the statue of, in Rio de Janeiro of Jesus, you know, the statue of Jesus and how you can see it for miles, I'm sure that's pretty much probably what it looked like. But then, after he constructs this gold statue, he calls all the important people of Babylon together. And he says, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do. When you hear music, when you hear music playing, you're going to bow down Everybody in all of Babylon is going to bow down and worship this statue. Okay? 
pretty, you know, pretty straight and to the point. Not too hard to understand. Music, bow down. Music, bow down, right? Okay, pretty easy. Anybody have any trouble understanding that? Okay, we got it. Music, bow down. <clears throat> but let's look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse 8 this morning. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. Anybody know what an astrologer is? You know. No. That's an astronomist. An astrologer. You know, they're the ones who have the signs, right? Pisces and all this. Yeah. It's not of God. Okay? Don't get caught up on what your what are those things called? What is it? Horoscopes says. Okay? <laughs> that is that is not God. That is another voice. Okay, so astrologers, because I'm telling you right here, astrologers were not for God. Okay, let's look at this in the Bible. Astrologers were not for God. Some astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you set up. Hmm. Did you hear that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had made the decision that we're going to be separate. Okay, we're going to, yeah, we're in the midst of Babylon. This is where we live because we've been taken captive, but we are not going to be like the people of Babylon, right? Okay, we, they didn't even want to eat the king's food when they got there. All right, so they had chosen, they had determined within themselves, we are going to be separate. We are going to be different in this country. And you see, when, when, you dis, when you make the decision in your heart, in your life, to be different, when you determine within yourself, I'm going to be different, I'm going to represent God, guess what happens? People take notice. You may not get the, you may not get the um, audience that you want, necessarily, but people are going to take notice. Okay, people took notice to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saying, we're going to stand over here. And you know what? When everybody else is bowing down, we're just going to stand here. Well, that's not what you're supposed to do, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's not what you're supposed to do. Well, according to who? According to who? Right? Because a lot of times, you know what we do? We let, we let the world convince us that's not what you're supposed to do. According to who? Well, you're not supposed to be like that. Well, according to who? How many have ever been guilted on Facebook into con compromising your beliefs because you believe something, but yet you weren't showing love because of that conviction? Come on. Anybody? We've all been there. We've all, we've all, been, we've all been made to feel guilty because we want to stand for the truth. But here they are. Okay, and I'm telling you, they're about, to, they're about to get it. Many of you know this, this account, right? But here's the thing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were at the point in their lives where they're saying, I don't care if everybody is doing it. I'm not going to. Have you ever become um, unpopular with your friends? with your family because you said no not going to do that not going to do it sorry i'm i'm not i'm sorry but not sorry okay cuz i'm going to do what god wants me to do i'm going to live how god wants me to live i i love you but i can't be a part of what you're doing and of course then here comes some names of self righteousness you're holier than thou you're this you're that right but you know, and church, listen to me this morning because I, I feel like 
too often we compromise because we hear some things like this. It's, it only takes something very small to be said to us that we start questioning. We start questioning, oh man, did I do this right? Did I do that right? I, this last week, I had somebody say something to me about someone else. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not a rumor person, so I'm going to go straight to the person and say, hey, did you guys do this? And then that person started feeling guilty, like, well, I, didn't, I don't think I said anything wrong. I don't think I did. And it's like, okay, if you don't believe, don't let that guilt convince you, and then you change who you are and who you are in Christ just so you can appease the person that is offended. See, a lot of times people get offended, and what we want to do, we want to retract the truth instead of standing for the truth and being separate. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in a position to where here they are, the king has told them what to do, and they, and they didn't do it, and the king is about to get furious, and they have an opportunity to retract the truth. Right? And they had the opportunity to go ahead and compromise their faith and their beliefs and do what is against their faith and their beliefs. They have the opportunity. It's right in front of them. Let's look at verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Oh, man, don't you just love questions like that? <laughs> it's like, man, you don't know who you're messing with, buddy. Right? You know, I, that's what would come to my mind. It's like, do you understand who you're messing with? I don't think you do. You see, see, you are so busy and so caught up in your false gods, you don't know my God. You don't know whom I serve. Amen? But again, church, this is what happened. What, what happens when we choose to stand up for what is right? It says he went into a fit of rage. People get mad, right? It's, going, it's been happening from before the time Jesus was walking on the earth. People got mad because of the truth. Read the book of Acts. People are getting mad every time you turned around, right? All because the truth was being preached. People go into fits of rage. Okay, some people have died because people have shared truth. They try, but, and they also they try to intimidate with us with anger and drive us into fear. It's like, oh man, he's mad. Oh, oh. But, you know, in that moment, what happens? We shrink God and we magnify them. Right? We let them get in our heads and we start, we start to think that they have more power over us than God does. But who's giving them that power? We give them the power. Right? See, as representatives of God, we stand with Him no matter what. No matter how standing for what is right angers those around us. But then, they don't just stop at getting angry. They try to convince us that their wisdom is greater than God's wisdom. They try to convince us that their power is greater than God's power. They try to convince us that their knowledge is greater than God's knowledge. Do you believe it? Are you convinced that God is greater? Or are you easy to just retract and say, oh man, sorry? It's not, church. God is greater than all, right? No matter what the situation may tell you, no matter what your feelings may tell you today, God is greater than all. Let's look, look at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. I can just hear it. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, you funny guy. You know, it's like, man, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, you're so cute. We do not need to defend ourselves before you. 
If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. I love that. They say this, the God that we, and then they also, they still honor the king, your majesty. You know, it's like, okay. He even, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Did you hear that? We will never, never, that's never going to happen. Some people say, don't ever say never. No, they're saying never. And they mean it, right? We, they're saying, hey, we will not do this. But here's what I love about this, this part of Scripture right here. When we choose to be set apart and people don't like it, when we choose to be set apart for God and people don't like it, we don't have to defend ourselves. Because guess who's defending us now? We have an advocate, right? We have somebody that's going to fight the battle for us. We have somebody that's going to step up in our defense. And he says, God is able to save and rescue us. Are you convinced of that today? Maybe you've gone through a week of, of hardship and difficulty, and you're thinking, man, I just don't know. Is it worth it? Maybe you, even got, maybe you even got ridiculed for your faith. And you're like, man, I just don't know. But I want to tell you, church, it's worth getting ridiculed for. Okay, there is nothing better than Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but here's the, the other thing that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say. God is able to save and rescue us, but even if he doesn't, we aren't bowing down to this God. Because that's not our God. We will not do this. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't just show up this day and make a decision. They had already predetermined in their hearts and in their lives that who they were going to serve. See, a lot of times what happens, what happens is we're on the fence. Okay, we're sitting on the fence, we're straddling the fence between God and the world. And then here comes, here comes this type of situation, and now we're forced to make a decision. Guess what decision we're going to make 99% of the time if we're straddling the fence? Okay, Nebuchadnezzar. That's what we're going to do. Because people that straddle the fence are not confident in, who the, in the God that they serve. Otherwise, they wouldn't be straddling the fence. They'd be completely on the ground that God has provided for them. That solid ground. But here they are. They had already predetermined, we serve God. Well, I, I bet you on their way to Babylon, well, they're, being taken, they're walking, they're there with Daniel, you know, they're walking along, they're like, okay, guys, we're getting ready to go into a corrupt country. A country that is not of the same, that does not follow the same God as we do. We need to go ahead and make the determination now. We need to go ahead and decide right now we're going to serve our God no matter the cost. Okay, I guarantee there was a conversation going on. This was already happening inside their hearts. So when this, when this happened, they're like, this is easy. We're not going to do this. We've already had this conversation. We've already made a decision. God is our God and no other. Right? Have you made that decision in your life today? Have you made that decision? Have you determined in your heart today that God is your God and no other? Because if you haven't, you're going to compromise. You're going, you're going to, to give up. But that's not what God wants for you. So just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to make a decision, so do we. Let's look at verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because 
The king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. Wow. It's going to get hot. Okay? If you're, if you're going to decide and you're going to make a decision to serve God and only God, it's going to get hot. Okay? Are you willing to face the heat? Okay, you know the old saying, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Well, if you can't stand the heat, serving God is going to be a hard, hard thing for us. Right? Because it's going, there's going to be times, and you, you, may, be, you may be saying to yourself, yeah, Patch, we don't have that kind of persecution here in the United States. So you're going to go ahead and just throw that out? I mean, you're just going to believe that? That it could never come? We never know. Right? I'm sure that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they probably weren't expecting this kind of persecution. This severe a persecution. It's like, what? He's extracting an idol? I mean, who, who does this? Right? Who does this? See, a lot of times we just go ahead and cast off like, oh, that won't happen to me. So we don't make a decision. We don't determine in our hearts that we need to serve God. But you see, when we make a choice to stand out, it could cost us everything. It could even cost us our lives. It'll take some serious faith to stay the course, to stay true to our convictions. And church, I can tell you, when the fire gets hot, it can be very easy to back, to back off, to back down, and say, man, I, I can't do this. But what other way is there? What other way is there? Is there really another way? You know, there's, you guys remember the old saying in Jerry Maguire, the famous quote in Jerry Maguire. Anybody tell me? No, not that one. <laughs> the other one, I guess, I, I, I don't know, maybe I was just giving my wife, maybe that's why it stuck out to me. You complete me, right? Uh-huh, yeah. No, but, you know, I... I I've always heard that, and you know, I've even written in some cards to my wife, but, but then I, this, in the last couple of weeks, there was, there was this thing that came, came in front of me, and it said, you know, you shouldn't put that type of responsibility on your spouse because they can't complete you. Only God can do that. How many of you know that even when you got married, maybe you didn't know Jesus, you weren't complete yet? Okay, you may have gotten married to somebody, but they didn't complete you. Jesus completes us, right? Jesus completes us. So, man, I, I, just, I can just see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's heart. They're just like, man, God completes us. We, if we'd, I mean, we're, 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 we'd rather die, okay? We would rather die today than bow down to that statue and, you know, give our God a black eye. I'm just not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to turn away from my God because there's really no life worth living if I'm not serving Him. Verse 24. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and excitement, exclaimed to his advisors, what did he exclaim? Didn't we tie up three men? And throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Wow. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what God does, right? Okay, when you get thrown into the fire when it gets really hot, guess what? You're not alone. You're not alone. God is there with you. He is walking with you. It doesn't matter how hot they turn the fire up. God says, hey, it's not too hot for me. It's not too hot for me. Come on, take me by the hand. Let's go do this. Stand for me and I will stand for you. Mm. Praise God. See, what's, this is what happened, though. When we represent God, 
and we represent him to the bitter end. When we say, you know what, no matter what, you throw me in that fire furnace, either I'm going to die or my God's going to rescue me. But either way, I'm not going to serve your God. It's not going to happen. That's not ever going to happen in my life. And so when you make that determination, when you stand for God and then God stands with you, guess what it does? It makes the people that ridiculed you see the God that you serve. Isn't that that our whole goal this morning, church? That people would see the God that we serve? Okay, Shadrach, Meshach went through all of, and Abednego went through all of this. And when it was all said and done, guess who Nebuchadnezzar got to see? You see, when we're going through the fire, if we will stand and we will stand firm and we will stand strong, the person that was once ridiculing us is going to see God eventually. Right? We get to show that we get to show the power of God at work, but it's our choice. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing was not scorched, but they didn't even smell of smoke. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. See, here's the thing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, unless you bow down to this statue, then you're going to be thrown into the flaming hot fire that's going to be seven times hotter than it was. But they just, they just kind of looked and go, but God, but God. Okay, but see, you don't know my God, right? Okay, and so this was a but God moment. Okay, they said, no, we're going to go ahead and stand. We're going to be separate. We're not going to do what your country does and bow down to your idol, but we're going to stand and we're going to be set apart. And then when we get in that position where the fire gets turned up, we get thrown into it. It's like, but God, but God is here. But God is here, right? But God is here. And when God shows up, everything changes. See, we can be certain today, church, no matter how hot the fire gets, God will always be faithful. God will always be faithful. And I, I don't know if you noticed this, but this is pretty awesome. In verse 26, or... Yes, verse 26. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, you're telling me if I stand up and I stand out for God, people are going to start seeing my God the way that I see my God? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. Isn't that what we want? When we're representing, that's what we want. We want people to see our God the way we see our God. Amen? Oh, man, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting excited here. Come on. <clears throat> Because this is what this this is what this whole series is all about. It's about representing. It's about it's about people seeing God for who He is. Okay, we've seen God for who He is, and it excited us. It excited us so much we said, "Yes, Lord, I want to serve You. I want to give my life to You. I want to do whatever You want me to do. I want to go wherever You want me to go." If that if that God, okay, that God, do you remember Him? You remember Him this morning? That one that you committed your life to, that one you said yes to, the one that said, God, wherever you send me, I will go. Yeah. You remember him? It can be easy to forget sometimes. But I want to represent that God. He he calls them servants of the Most High God. Wow. Mm. Verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. 
If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. Rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. Wow. Church, if you're not convinced yet that representing God is not going to make a difference, okay, you may be saying, yeah, I've represented God before. It didn't really matter. No, it always makes a difference. You just may not get to see it, just like we saw here with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But any time you represent God, any time you stand up and stand out for Jesus Christ, you're making a difference in the life of somebody. Okay, any time you retract from the truth, you're making a difference in the life of somebody. So we have to be careful that we are the ones standing up and standing out so that we are making an impact on their lives for Jesus Christ. Because honestly, the, I'm telling you, the only reason... Okay, we, we sang that song. What was the name of that song, that new song that you had? You saved us to show your glory. Right? That's why. That's why you've been saved today. That's why I've been saved today. Why? Not for me. Not so I can get a ticket to heaven. No, so I can show his glory to the nations. So I can show his glory to the, to the world. Right? And, and many times that's going to mean I've got to come out from among them. I've got to be different. I've got to be separate. I've got to stand out. If we don't represent... If the church does not represent, this world has no hope. It really doesn't. It's hopeless. Because we are the hope of the world, right? Because Jesus went to go, remember, we're Jesus now. Okay, Jesus gave us the baton. He said, we, I'm going to live in you by my spirit. I'm going to go sit at the right hand of the Father and make intercession for you. Will you go out and be my hands and my feet? So that's who we are. And because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego chose to represent, guess what happened? Nebuchadnezzar's changed, and a country is changed. Whoo! If that doesn't convince you to want to represent, I don't know what does. This is what we have to do. Can I tell you it's going to be hard? Okay, that's why I love the Bible. It doesn't paint a pretty picture for us. Okay, if you want to stand out for Jesus, it's going to be hard. You're going to face trials. It's going to get hot. But are you willing to do it? Is he enough? Is he all that you want? Is he all that you need? Have you determined in your heart today, church? Have you determined in your heart today that you're going to live and represent God? no matter how hard it might be. Have you determined in your heart today that God is going to get your full allegiance no matter how hot the fire gets? Because I can about guarantee you today that if you don't have that conversation today and you walk out those doors and you think that you're going to be prepared when the trial hits you, you got another thing coming. Maybe you've already had that conversation. That's great. Maybe you've, already, maybe you've already sat down with the Lord and you've already said, you know what? This world's falling apart. This world's going to hell in a handbasket, man. Okay? I'm telling you, this world has a lot of issues. So today, I'm making the decision, Lord. God, I'm going to predetermine in my heart right now. Right here before you. God, that I'm going to serve you no matter what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever it takes. We're gonna, I'm, I'm getting ready to walk out into a world that has no reverence for Christ. I'm getting ready to walk out into a world that doesn't honor God whatsoever. So in here, I'm going to make the determination. I'm going to determine in my heart right here and right now, I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm going to serve Jesus. So now when I walk out those doors, I've already, I've already made the decision. I've already made that decision. Now when I come up against, the, against something that's trying to come against my faith, I've already made that decision. It's not, it's not a question. 
It's not something I have to wonder, well, what am I going to do here? Right? It's not something I have to, I have to question. God, what should I do here? He's like, you've already made that decision. You're going to stand for me no matter what. You're going to do what I want you to do no matter what. I believe that God, that God is calling us to an all-in relationship. Are you all in today? Are you all in? Are you saying, you know what, God? I'm all in. God, I'm willing to go into the hottest, blazing, blazingest furnace there ever was if I have to. Because I'm all in. I'm not going to bow down to anything else because I'm all in. Right? I'm going to worship you and you alone because I'm all in. I'm going to come out and be separate from among them because I'm all in. Right? I'm not going to blend in anymore, but I'm going to represent God Almighty because I'm all in. You ever get tired of blending in? You ever get tired of mediocrity? I'm convinced today that Jesus didn't call us to mediocrity. He called us to a faith that makes a difference. He called us to a faith that changes lives. He called us to a faith that changes countries. He called us to a faith that changes communities. He called us to a faith that changes people. And we get to be the tools that He's using to do it. Amen? We get to be the tools that He's using to do it. Are you ready to represent, church? Are you ready to say, I'm all in? I'm all in. Are you ready? I don't want this to be an emotional decision today, but I want this to be a heartfelt decision. I want this to be a decision you're making right now. And by making that decision, you're going to stand up and you're going to declare, God, I'm all in. God, I'm ready to represent. I'm ready to stand out. I'm ready to stick out. No matter if people look at me, they call me names, no matter what they do, I'm ready to be here for you, God. I'm ready to represent you. Because God, I I haven't seen anybody change in my life in a while. And I'm ready to see that again. If that's you, you're saying, God, I'm I'm all in. I'm going to determine right now in my heart, right now, that I'm all in. Stand up. Thank you, Bob. You already got it. Stand up where you are. I'm all in. I'm all in. If that's you, I'm all in. I have decided to follow Praise God. No turning back. No turning back. Sing this this morning, church. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. people that have decided to be all in for Jesus. Church, I'm just going to throw this out there. In the next several weeks, the next several months, even the next several years, I'm looking for a story like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of this church. Come on. If you're all in, come on. 
I'm looking for stories that we only have read in the Bible to be present right here in this church, in this community, in this nation, because we have made a determination today that we are all in. Yes! But it's going to take more than just standing up in a church building. Now we got to go out there and we got to do it. You can do it. I believe in you. God believes in you. He's called you. He set you apart for such a time as this. Praise God. I'm going I'm to pray over you. I'm going to bless you this morning. God, in the name of Jesus... God, you see every person, Lord, standing up. God, standing up and declaring in their hearts today. God, we are all in. We are standing up and we are standing out for Jesus Christ. And God, we want you to use us. We want you, Lord God, to lead us, to guide us. Help us to be confident in who you are and in who we are in you. And Lord, right now, right now, God, we declare... We determine in our hearts, we are yours. Use us, God, however you, desi- however you desire. And God, I pray, Father God, that no matter how hot the fire gets, God, we will stand and we will live for you no matter what. God, thank you. We praise you, God, that you are our strength. That as we have determined to stand for you, God, you have in turn determined to stand with us. And so, God, we don't go alone, but we go with the mighty hand of God. And the church said, Amen. Praise God. Yes. God bless y'all. Love you.